Ah, right. Hello. So, apologies to you all for the late start, but I had to deal with some stuff beforehand. I uh, have a guest today, uh, I have Veltra with me, to try and do a take two on the last time we tried to stream. <laughs> and hopefully this time things will go a little bit better than last time. Yes, Sneedclave Solaris. Oh, and thank you for the follow, er Ernius. <laughs> God bless John Henry Sneed. God bless the Sneed Clave. <laughs> but yes, we are going to continue on with my uh, conquest models today. Let me just adjust the camera to make sure it looks all nice and cl or as clear as I can get it. Yeah. Because I am not one of those fools that uses autofocus. Because this camera is shit with its autofocus. <laughs> hey there, Ernius. How you doing, Ernius? Uh, hey, Linus. Hi, Linus. Hello. Uh, hopefully, we get a bit more work done on him and then we'll start getting the base work done on the others. Right, so let me inspect. Let's see, we need to talk about the real issues here. Why do we not have anywhere near enough explosives? Ha! <laughs> it's a good point. Why do we have not? Why? Why do we not have nearly enough explosives? I blame it on lack of motivation. Uh, doing good, Ernest. Doing good. I've been worse. Not been awake long. I've actually only been awake maybe, what, 40 minutes ish? Yeah, and I've been awake less than an hour for sure. But hey, you know what? Two sleepy people in a call can only go well. I mean, one's painting, one's memeing. There's only so much memeing I can do. I'm not exactly a natural born shit poster. <laughs> uh, well you could tell you could tell people what you what your plans are for today. Oh my plans for today. Um sit around, occasionally look at job openings in my area, and then most of the time fuck around either running around the Mojave or talking to friends. Not a bad plan. Um, I've had worse plans, for sure. True, true. I mean, I'm pretty sure we've all had worse plans. Uh, what was Saddle Brown I used? Uh, so, put a bit of Saddle Brown on the palette. Grab my very slowly dwindling bottle of pastel yellow. See, but are we gonna question why there's a train being run on a world leader in the hold? What? <laughs> I'm sorry, what? What's my exact reaction to finding that out? What's going on in the hold? Apparently, one world leader really can take an entire crusade. That... Jeez, crazy there. It just hit me. It just hit me. And not in the fight. Uh, <laughs> what the hell? You've been hanging around with Ren. You've been hanging around with Ren a bit too much. You oh, you didn't think you'd see Velstro in a cap? Well, that's just Sneedclave culture for you. Um, as Mari said, is the most fitting picture for all of this. Yes. Because we can't just have an animated GIF in the corner with that one scene from Fallout 2. So I'm gonna kick your fucking Mayo. ass! <laughs> no, no, the one with the vault. Oh, yeah. No, no, I don't think I could get away with that. <laughs> Oh god, no, I realise I'm not even in shot. God. I keep forgetting sometimes. 
I just kind of subconsciously forget that I'm not in shot sometimes. It happens. I should pay more attention to remind you. Yeah. Enclave soldiers are so afraid of losing their ar armors that they never take them off. We're not afraid of taking off our armor. We just see no reason to do so. Any responsible soldier knows exactly where they left their XO2 advanced power armor. And if they don't, well... What happens to those that lose their armor? Well, usually they get locked up or, uh, in most extreme cases of negligence, it, shot. Because that's expensive government equipment. It's expensive government equipment, however, the soldiers are also expensive, so... They should know better. They make sure to train them all to take a, a, extra special care of their equipment. You know that nails it still shoot people with a cap. <laughs> uh, let me see if I could adjust things here. Wait, is this the right oh, way? No, there's not too high a chance of it being stolen. Uh, yeah, that's that should work. You know, you got your armor properly set up. It doesn't exactly unlock for just anyone. Hmm. In other news today, I saw something very interesting on my phone when I woke up. People of that. Someone has finally cracked the, the secret of running emulation on an Xbox One. Really? Yeah. 4K PS1 emulation on an Xbox Series X. You know what? It was bound to happen eventually. Yeah. And like, it was yeah, some cool electronics for <laughs> disassembly. Is that the Xbox for the armor? Boat, <laughs> I guess. Speaking of emulation, though, I stayed up late last night to set up an emulator for streaming. <laughs> I actually uh, set up Project 64. Project 64. That, heard of that one. It is the premier emulator for Nintendo 64 games. So, should we be looking forward to some N64 games then? Oh, yeah. Name the uh, Conker's Bad Fur Day just because it suits my sense of humor. <laughs> I can't believe you had no idea that was allowed on Twitch. I thought it was bad. I thought the Great Mighty Poo got it banned. <laughs> I genuinely thought the Great Mighty Pooh got it banned. They only have so much sway over the American companies. <laughs> and, yes, Cola, they did get yelled at by Sergeant Dornan uh, back when Navarro was still in one piece. Yep. <laughs> Although old consoles are probably more valuable. Yeah, to be honest. I bet a PS1 would be more valuable than XO2 armor. <laughs> if it still worked. Not particularly. I mean, have you ever seen you ever seen the inner workings of a PS1? That shit does not is not built to last. It was not. However, I have seen the inside of one of those things, and I know that they are not too complicated. Those <laughs> cards that they need can easily be uh, reproduced nowadays. Oh, yeah. Why did the Enclave let a giant mutant be their sergeant? Because the Lamp Super Mutant in particular was mutated intentionally as part of a project to create a race of super soldiers, and that one in particular was a Marine. A U.S. Marine who had volunteered to take up that role. However, most of the other volunteers did not succeed. They he, died. He was the only one that didn't Frank die. Oregon did not. 
as far as I know, he was like he was supposed to be the president's bodyguard as well, wasn't he? He was. He was formerly of Marine and Secret Service. Hmm. So I think the last time I did anything extensively Fallout was I actually played through that uh, storyteller mod that they brought out for Fallout 4. Like that retells like the origins of the Brotherhood. A waste of human resources. You would be surprised what we consider to be a waste. And in that particular scenario, no. As we saw with the success of Frank Horgan, there was quite a bit to be gained from that project in particular. Cybernetics. Eh, cybernetics isn't always a surefire solution. Yeah, they actually aren't quite as powerful as becoming a super mutant in power armor. Not as not as useful as the Institute claims that they are. <laughs> they have a tendency to kind of malfunction a lot. They're expensive, but then so is power armor. So, yeah, and anyways, only so many cybernetics you can stick in a single person where mutation just makes more, just more times than not, just makes more of what's there. <laughs> See, that's the thing, Alex. They do have that, well, maybe not bullet time. Bullet time really doesn't make too much sense. However, the height and regeneration is part of the super mutant's physiology. Because it's their metabolism working way faster than it should be. And on top of that, Frank Horgan had a custom suit of power armor. That constantly pumped med like meds into him. He was stronger than most tanks. How stable are super mutants? Not very. Actually, they were surprisingly stable as far as their genome. Uh, they didn't mutate any further than the, just becoming a super mutant. The radioactivity actually made them stronger as a result. Oh yeah, because like, what was it? Uh, what was his name? He was in the first game, but he shows up in New Vegas. Was it Jacob? Marcus. Oh, Marcus, yeah. Because they, it was the, it was the use of the stealth boys that turned the Nightkins into schizophrenics, wasn't it? Yes, and that was something particular to the stealth boys that shouldn't have happened, but it did, and that's why a cure needed to be found. Yeah, it was just an unfortunate side effect based on the, the manipulated genome of the super mutants, wasn't it? They did make a special horse of sent uh, sentient death claws, and they later decided once that uh, intelligent horse of death claws uh, had served its purpose to disband it by force. Ooh. Yes, there was at one time a full facility of intelligent death claws. They did not last long, though, did they? No. Frank Horgan was sent to deal with them personally. I thought that you are a font of knowledge when it comes to Fallout lore. Not particularly, no. Well, compared to me, you are. Okay. <laughs> I know slightly more than surface level. I could use a bit more study. What about what about the blind death claws that you see in New Vegas? See, and there's there it is the re the things that I don't know yet that I need to look into and research. Uh, stuff like the blind death claws. Why are they blind? Why are they hanging around that one quarry in particular? Yeah, that's what I want to know. I mean, I'm probably sure. I'm probably sure. Storyteller's done a video on it, but eh. 
Oh, inevitably, someone's already done a video on it. A couple people have already done a video on it, almost absolutely. Uh, but I haven't really looked into it yet. However, a death claw doesn't need a heavy weapon. Because, no. well, how are you going to strap that to their talon's fingers? Plus, also, their talon. claws are technically considered heavy weapons. Oh, yeah, they they rend right through power armor. Uh, there is no real defense against them. However, the armored part of it, they did work on. I'm trying to remember, what was the name of the character from Tree? Was it Do Dog? The one super mutant that you saved from... Uh, Dog God. Dog God. He was an interesting character. And then there was, um... Cazadors and snake dogs. Do you mean the Nightcrawlers? Oh yeah, Nightcrawlers. Ugh. Fucking hate Nightcrawlers. Harold! <laughs> oh, Harold. Yes, the man who mutated into a tree and just wanted to die. <laughs> That's pretty based. It's just like, please, human, kill me. His story was so sad, though. Oh, well, yeah, of course. The man was mutating to a fucking tree. <laughs> he had left there for over a hundred years. And they're worshipped by a bunch of psych uh, mental cases. Alex, you do not need to remind me of that. I didn't need to be reminded that there are invisible nightcrawlers. Ugh. That's like me fighting spiders. However, the other question, why not mount guns on a Death Claws black weapon platforms? Uh, it's unnecessary, really. Uh, if a Death Claw, like, you need something to control those guns, and the Death Claw can't do that. So at that point, why aren't you just using a Securitron? Mm, true. Or a sentry bot. Hmm. Or even a robo brain. There's just there are other options that can do the same thing, but cheaper and better, and easier to deactivate if need be. A sentient death claw could do that. <laughs> true. It's not worth the trouble. Yeah, it's... the potential trouble. There's a lot of be a liability. There'd be a lot of fucking variables in place on that one especially the fact that it, it does it sentience make it smarter than you oh no it doesn't make it smarter it just means it can think independently yeah but a death claw that can think independently would be dangerous i think the fact that it's a death claw is uh, bad enough what was it they used as the basis for the Death Claw again in their testing? I know it was there was some animal that they used as like the basis of the genome for them. Oh, oh, was it a get? No, it wasn't a get. Oh, yeah, it was a lizard. Oh, Kami, thank you for the host. the banner guy aside for now if he would stat just stand for me there we go thank you jesus the weight on that banner just pushes uh, off the balance of the made from the popular jackson's chameleon the jackson's chameleon which is odd because i've never seen a chameleon death claw Master was the one who uh, refined their genetic manipulation with the FEP. So now we have the modern Death Claws. The 
you know what item depth there are, and that scares me. <laughs> that would scare me too, not gonna lie. I think the only time, I think every time I've played Fallout 4, I've never even gone into the glowing sea. Uh, a matriarch Ooh. because it's the uh, what's it called uh, not nest mother uh, whatever brood mother I don't think it was brood mother it was um, oh, were they really just called death claw mothers I don't know but the point is, those ones, yeah, they're bigger because they need to take out their babies. Plus also, the others would protect it stronger because they know that it's kind of like a... It's kind of almost like a bee in a way. Like, if you kill the matriarch, the others have no leadership and then they'll scatter. No, it's that they have no way of reproducing. And inevitably, one by one, they get picked off. And without reinforcement, they just disperse. Hmm. As long as you can destroy the Alpha and the Mother, then the rest of them will run. Interesting. Problem is, you know, getting through their defenses, you'd have to go and get past the several death claws to get to the Alpha and the Mother. Oh, Jesus. And the Mother herself is still guarded by all of her younger death claw babies. Oh no, not the elves. Elves set off Belstro. I greatly dislike elves. Is it because of how sexualized they are? It is many layers of things. But mostly that they backstab anyone who works with them. That is true. Mostly of a superiority complex. Am I a dwarf? Um, <laughs> no, only that I am taller than average. But you have the mentality of a dwarf. Yes. I even was a blacksmith. Nice. Wait, wait. I was because uh, I don't have the tools for it anymore. So, what, were you like self trained or did you actually go to school for it? Uh, self trained, as in, you know, read books, played with metal, heated up, hammered it out into shapes, that sort of thing. Ooh. But, you know, um, that, that's actually really cool. I was an amateur armor smith just before I had to quit. Ouch. What? It, it's just I couldn't go to that facility anymore because it was no longer there. Uh, did you ever get to make anything though? Like, proper? Nothing really proper, no. Just some pieces of metal that were never fully finished. I know the basic process is but I do need to go and get myself some new tools. Let's see. I need to adjust the camera focus. Dwarfs are elves. But that is... Yeah, the Dwemer are technically... Right. Well, the Dwemer are... Nobody knows what the Dwemer really were. All we know is that they were a bunch of weirdos. The Dark Elves. Oh, the Dunmer. Yeah. Yeah, they sound too similar. 
Mm. But like the Dwemer were basically the dwarves, but they were like no Dwemer survived up until the games. They're all basically extinct by the time the first game rolls around. All that's left of their ruins. Wait, is a sh in Morrowind? I'm pretty sure that one in Morrowind's just a like a like a projection. All right. Yeah, no. So, Mari, what would you do if there was an elven child right in front of you? Child? Oh, boy. That's a bit of a moral dilemma there, Velstra. There is no moral dilemma. They are not human. They have, Yeah, but they still have morality. Elves? No. no. They have no morality for how they treat other races. Why should we have any for them? I mean, that's more the mentality I have with gnomes. Gnomes? A gnome feels no empathy. No no love for its common man. They sound like smaller elves. The only love they feel, even if you could call it as such, is for cold hard cash. No, Alex. They are not human. Well, they're not here. No, they're... The correct term would be humanoid. Like. No, they are sentient. But they are not human. Hmm. It's a bit of a... Fuck fairies. Alright, Linus, that is very, very based. Fuck fairies? <laughs> no, humans are not elves who are dwarfed. Humans are humans. Elves are elves. Actually, I, I have something that might set off Lioness. Lioness, what is your view on the pixies from Final Fantasy? I'm waiting to see this now. Fuck them with a meat. <laughs> what, you don't want to play games with them? Uh, I was about to hydrate while holding my brush in my mouth. Jesus. Don't drink your paint water. I'm not drinking the paint water. Oh, who am I kidding? No, always drink your paint water. Remember, kids, always drink your paint water. It gives you strong bones full of metal plates. Marvie's becoming a brush licker. What? How dare you? I have no brush licker. I take care of my brushes, thank you very much. Lioness, I agree with that assessment. Me trying to save the world from soul suckers and the fucking magic flies playing hide and seek. <laughs> yep, that's basically the pixies. Yay! How you been? Liv, how you doing, bud? Sleep. Slib. It's like me last night. I was 
waiting for my medication to kick in when I went to bed. And then at 3 a.m., Ren messages me just saying, sleep, gun emoji. <laughs> no elves, fine. Dwarves, fine. Goblins, acceptable. Depends on the goblin for me. But fairies, I will become a corn berserker. Thank you, Lioness. That is a good <laughs> insight into how you think, how you approach fantasy races. Wait, you... Oh, crash. You mean like you fell asleep, crash? You not like crashed your fucking car, have you? It, it, it meant crash. Yeah, I'm asleep. like, hold on. He didn't like crash his car, did he? And yes, Solaris, elves are cringe. Oh, crash my car. <laughs> good, good. Also, I was looking through some N64 ROMs last night while I was setting up the emulator. And you know what I found? What'd you find? Rayman 2. Ooh. And the, N and the N64 South Park game. Where's where was Raymond 2? Was that the one I played? Uh, Raymond 2 The Great Escape. No, because on the DS version it was called something else. Yeah. Than Raymond 2. I think it was Raymond Legends. No, it wasn't that. It was something else. I don't remember. I just remember that um that game had one part in particular that I just could not get over as far as how it was done. And it almost made me quit the game outright because of how janky the platforming was. Oh, most things made by French people are janky, though. That's the thing. Janky is their language. Janky is their language. Somehow they understand the jank. They live in the jank. Though, there is worse jank than French jank. Slav jank. Nah, Slav jank is pretty based. Like, there's a reason I love New Vegas so much, and it is that it has just the right amount of jank. That's American jank, though. It's New Vegas is just cowboy Ukraine. Cowboy Ukraine. <laughs> Sorry, Nevada is cowboy Ukraine. New Vegas takes place in Nevada, specifically the Mojave Desert. God. Team Necromancers. Yes. How does one start a Necromancers Guild in D and D illegally? Illegally. <laughs> yes. Eight skeletons and rookie numbers. You need to have at least thirty by the time you've finished your first week of adventuring. You need to start with some poison and public water supply. <laughs> you need to purify the wasteland. Look, we'll call Stubbs, he'll just piss in the water supply, it's fine. <laughs> oh, wait, do you remember that? The entire plot of Fallout 3. You mean, oh, you mean the, the, purif the, the purifier? No, that was Fallout 1, where they were looking for the Gek. Uh, in Fallout 3, it was all about protecting the water from the Enclave, because the Enclave wanted to poison the main, the central water supply for that entire area of the wasteland. To get rid of the Brotherhood. To get rid of anyone who was drinking it. Wow. They were going to poison the water supply to get rid of all the muties. Pretty good plan if you ask me. Not that many options of what else to drink. The Enclave were safe, of course. Could not drink Brahmin because, milk. Not just because of the drink itself, not really affecting them, but because they used a different water supply. In their own vaults. Yeah. You need a blood pri a blood pr a blonde a blonde prince that need to say this entire city must be. Eh. Uh, no, get out of here. No, no artists. No artists. No 
what now? Are the, the, the quote uh, that Lioness just put up, it's a, it's a reference to Warcraft. This entire city was purged. The pur it was the purging of Stratholme from the old Warcraft tree strategy game. Interesting. Because you see, what happened was uh, a city's uh, food supply, grain supply was blighted and it would turn people into Scourge, which are basically undead, right? But right. this one guy called Prince Artis was manipulated into thinking that the entire place was irrede irredeemable. So he ordered his men to literally burn down everything in sight. Including innocent civilians. I don't know. It sounds pretty base to me. Oh, hello, Xander. The other but thing yeah, you see a, a, a city filled with degeneracy. There's only one proper response to it. I have an idea for a stream tomorrow that might bounce off you. Well, I have that be? I want to do more muck. <laughs> well, then, uh, you want to get the whole party together for that? Yeah, I'm gonna get. Once Ren's awake, I'm gonna ask her does she want to do a muck stream tomorrow? <laughs> See, I saw they were working on a story mode at some point, but I don't know what happened to it. I don't know. I, I saw the video that the guy who made it put up about the game. Like he literally only did it just to prove a point that he could that he would make that kind of game because somebody in his comments said he wouldn't. <laughs> that is He lit that is dangerously based. Yeah. No, no hellpoint. No 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 no. <laughs> you can always play Hellpoint, Mari. No 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 no. We'll always watch it. <laughs> Livy is no, I don't want your pain. I'm just hoping I'm not completely out of it for the stream on set for pa Wrath and Glory on Saturday, though. Well, I'm worried about not getting up on time, or well, I have my I have my vac my second dose of vaccine tomorrow. Oof. Yeah. Doesn't affect you as much as it usually does for most people. I'm gonna get my five. I'm gonna get my five G fully installed tomorrow, boys. But I heard <laughs> the second dose is usually easier on your body overall than the first one. I didn't feel anything with the first dose. Well, then who knows? Maybe you will be just fine. Or is a placebo? <laughs> probably find out. Oh, hydrate. What a good day when Leviticus was on fire and sounded like an elephant. <coughs> no, not an elephant, an elephant. Because chaos. <laughs> Guess what I miss? A term of faint. A turbo fact. <laughs> what are they? I don't know. I don't know, Lioness. I think that's just the regular Chaos Terminators. Whatever. Half breeds. Yeah. What's your What's your feeling about half breeds, there, Velsha? Uh, do they still have pointy ears? Yeah. Good question. Do they have? Did I have pointy ears or not, Alex? Because they're just slimmer humans and are passably as passable as human, then, well, I have no problem with them. As long as they can maintain, you know, themselves as a respectable member of society. However, no. if they start backstabbing and tricking people just because they can, or if they get dangerously horny. Acceptable. 
However, the dangerously horny part is only weird from the elves because they're basically just stealing from the crib. Um, wow. The races they are actually interested in sexually are significantly younger than them. And remember, an elf doesn't fully mature until they're 100 years old. True, true. So, if they are at least 100 years old and still interacting with children from another race. Oh, God. You start to see the problem. Yeah. So between that and the backstabbing, I simply do not like them. Not in the slightest. In fact, most of the problems between every universe that has elves uh, can usually be traced back to something the elves did directly. To another race. Exactly. Or to themselves. Like in the case of uh, Elder Scrolls. Yeah, or Warhammer. Or Warhammer. Warhammer uh, Fantasy and uh, 40. 40k. Ghosts and spirits. Where is the undead support here? <laughs> well, that's the thing. We don't really need to talk about them because we're only complaining about stuff we don't like. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind the undead. Yeah, the undead are fine usually. <coughs> Although um, the more unstable ones were created as a result of, you know, elf magic. I accept this answer. <laughs> yeah, she fixed the world for so Wait, who fixed the world? Is it like the fantasy version of Eldrad? all their fix in the world, Lioness. Uh, how far did they get before the problems that they had created got out of hand again? I have to admit, these models have some amazing details for the size of them. Like, let me... You say they're worth their money? Oh, yeah! Oh, let me zoom in and show you all. I just need to... I bear off pulling up OBS to adjust this so I can actually see it myself. There, can you see it? Okay. About as focused as it's gonna get. Yeah. But I do think it's a little bit more visible the detail for the person who's actually painting it. Yeah. But like you could see like the individual like bump lines in the quilting on that like area around the waist. <laughs> the only reason that this seems incredibly detailed to you is that you're so used to GW miniatures you're not you're not <laughs> you are surprised to see anything of high quality <laughs> anywhere else yep plus the fact that Parabellum seemed to be a pretty based company <laughs> they seem to be decent folk I mean have you seen their core box deal this is not this is not sponsored by the way I wish it was <laughs> One day. Uh, <laughs> One day. No, I haven't, I haven't sleep in that box, no. So, their deal is $100, right? You get their core box, which has a 100 Kingdoms army, which is the humans. And a Spires army, which are basically the kind of old ones kind of army. Right? But... On top of the the hundred dollars you pay for a set box, they give you a choice of two unit expansions for free, which are normally around thirty to forty dollars each. Huh. 
uh, you can mix and match them. Yes, I am talking about Conquest, Alex. That it is actually a pretty good deal. Yeah, but mine arrived today and I got extra 100 Kingdoms models because I want to do a big 100 Kingdoms army with like custom lore and stuff. And I was able to get another box of Household Knights, which are a cavalry unit, and a, and a unit of Steel Legion, which are basically kind of, what would you call them, Vanguard units? You know, kind of like big great swords used for breaking down shields, shield walls and stuff. I mean, I do love siege weaponry. I don't think they have anything massive in the way of siege weaponry yet in the game, but it's still an early, it's still early days on the actual game. I think it's only been around for like a year or so now. You know, I'll not ever get that big, but it would be cool to see it. Spire armies have those long leg wig robots. Oh yeah. The, oh, but do they have cavalry yet? The the spires. In, in the conquest game. Uh, there is cav units, yes. As I said, the Hundred Kingdoms have a unit called Household Knights, which are basically just mounted cavalry. Mounted heavy cav. They are he heavy cav. <laughs> but here's the one thing that a lot of people like about Conquest. I'll just hold it up. Movement trays. <laughs> well importantly standardized movement trays exactly the fact that it actually has mass combat the fact that it actually has movement trays for mass combat because <laughs> uh, I found out something interesting apparently one of the rules writers that works on conquests right worked on the original uh, fantasy battle rules That actually explains a lot, actually, in all honesty. That, um, yeah. That explains a lot of the design philosophy, and now that I know the movement trays. Yeah, it explains a lot. <laughs> it could be possible they're just aiming to, you know, pick up on that crowd. I think know, that, I think that it. Players that wanted fantasy back. I think that is what they're aiming at. But like I never, I never got to play fantasy as a kid, so this is kind of new territory for me. Exactly, it's going to be new territory for a lot of people. But a lot of people have also played Total War, Warhammer Two, or either one of those games, really. And they're wondering um, why this game that GW is currently putting out for fantasy isn't fantasy. It's... It isn't what they were playing on the game. Yeah, it's just like wait, hold on, where, where's Kislev? Where's Altdorf? Where are the Bretonians? Where are the Frenchmen? <laughs> Who are these fucking Sailor Moon looking metal men? Duncan never to get to use his Bretonians again. I think Duncan will. Old World's coming out soon. Though I didn't say that, but GW. As far as I know, Duncan actually has a big thing going with the Conquest people at the moment. That's how I got this box of crossbowmen. It was a promotion from his uh, painting academy. I literally got the price of the box off them. I only had to pay shipping. Pretty good. Yeah. And the clever thing is, they shipped from inside the EU, so I didn't have to pay import charges. <laughs> I keep forgetting that Ireland is still part of the EU, even though uh, the UK is exited. Yeah. But yeah, that's a pretty good deal, actually. I mean, yeah. Probably passed by now, but good for you. They, they, and all the factions they have for the game are really interesting. So, if I just pulled them up here real quick just to read off, uh, we got a Parabellum. 
Uh, obviously, you got the Hundred Kingdoms here, which are your your hum your humies. Then the spires. Uh, the Dwegholm are the dwarves of this universe. And what's interesting, each fa each main faction in the game has its own sub factions, which are like different, unique kind of build compositions for armies that actually have lore behind them. So sort of like your your space marine chapters of or whatnot. So they're also I'm gonna make them a bit more customizable then. Oh yeah. Like just like look at the variance in like posing between these two models of the same unit. Just one in a normal idle standing pose and then one like properly crouched down. Yeah, it's pretty interesting, actually. I think Ren was talking about getting into this as well. She wants to do a painting collaboration with Reaver. <laughs> Which will absolutely go well, I'm sure. Yeah. As far as I know, she wants Reaver to paint the Hundred Kingdoms half of the box, and she wants to paint the Spires half of the box. Question is, what should we be doing that on stream or just in private? I don't I get the feeling it's probably in private. I don't know. I think she was talk. She was talking about maybe doing it as a stream idea, which I'm a hundred percent for if she wants to. No, it's that she doesn't want to even risk accidentally doxing herself. Yeah, that's the only thing so far as of what's stopping her. Yeah. She'd have to work on a, a proper setup that won't give off any information. Yeah, it's just a, you know, how do I explain that? She doesn't quite have the confidence for it yet. Ah, uh, sure. We all have, we all have our areas that we're not exactly confident with. Like I'm more, I'm more, I don't know if. You, if you might have noticed, but like I'm a bit more confident when it comes to these kinds of streams. Really, you seem plenty confident when you're playing games. Do I? Yeah. It's one of the things that makes them so fun. You're not really questioning whether or not you're feeling confident. You're just playing and enjoying yourself. Yeah. That's good. I just feel more... Not too, too badly, all things considered. Yeah. Thank you. Like, I know I've only been at this for what now? Three? Four months now? Oh, has it only been that long? I could have sworn it was longer. Uh, I started in February. Last I checked. Oh, you know what? Um, I'm a founder of four months. So, yeah, it has been four months. <laughs> uh, so... It Technically, I started back in February, so I've actually been at this for six months. Oh yeah, because you didn't hit affiliate. No, I only hit I hit four months ago. Exactly, I only hit affiliate four months ago. It took me two months to hit affiliate. Oh, Ma Masha, is it Masashi or Masha? Masashi. Masashi. Thank you so much for the raid. <laughs> Masheshi. What a name. But yes, hello raiders, hello. We're just chilling here. Talking th talking things with Velstro and painting some models. Hope you all enjoyed Mashi's stream. What were what were you up to, Mash? thing to just bring up what they were playing just uh, yet. No, I haven't set that up yet. <laughs> oh! Book, you say? That's cool. Uh, oh, I'm doing good, I'm doing good. 
kind of book are you, what kind of book are you doing? Epic fantasy. Oh, nice. I hope I hope I hope the publisher is ha happy with what you write, and I hope that it turns out really well for you. Might actually have to give it a read someday. What's the name? So I can keep an eye out for it in the future. <laughs> Everyone likes angsty lesbian. <laughs> Oh my god. Easy there, Veilstro. Easy. Oh, the light of Nier. <laughs> okay, that, that actually sounds cool. <laughs> what a beautiful day for talking about elves. Yes, talking about different ways of annihilating them. It's like mute. They're like muties to you, aren't they? They're elves. I need no other reason to want to destroy them. <laughs> but what about the Elf Geneva Convention? They follow him. I don't know. And they went and murdered random villages that had nothing to do with them. Mm. That sounds more like a human thing to do, but. You'd be surprised what an elf thing to do is. Uh, let's see, what do I want to do with this? Oh, I, need to, I actually need to paint his mittens or his protective gloves. That's the wrong brush. I can't believe I just called them mittens. <laughs> right, yep, another hydrate. Good on you. Mm. Yeah, gotta make sure you stay hydrated. Yeah, exactly. Even though it's like wet as hell outside, it's still hot because of the computer. <laughs> yep, small room. Very hot computer. I'm not as hot now now that I've actually, you know, done a proper airflow system for my computer. <laughs> oh no, you say that, but it's still gonna heat up oh, quite yeah. a bit. Uh, it's gonna be dumping oh. water into your room if it's working properly. Hello, Stadler. How are you doing? How are you doing, Stadler? Haven't seen you Been around a while. Yeah. Hope you're doing good. Gotta hold them upside down. More of my light brown. Ah, doing pretty well, thank you. Just painting some, painting up some uh, conquest models. Yep. I need to get myself some more painting handles. I need to get back onto. I need to get back onto Garfield and order a couple more of these uh, get a grips. Because, uh, fuck buying the uh, Marital Aid paint handle from GW. <laughs> marital Aid paint handle. Have you never seen the design of the... Interesting terminology. I mean, I'm trying to not say that. I'm not trying to say the D word. Or... Are we not allowed to say it? I we weren't allowed to okay, say it. Okay, well, I'll say it's a butt plug, okay? It's a fucking butt plug. Yeah. Don't worry, Mario. We're an hour in. Nobody's watching now. <laughs> we can say what we want. <laughs> but yeah, the butt plug handle. Uh, kind of expensive for what it is. Where this is like maybe five, six quid. Five or six dollars? <laughs> and like, 
You can just 3D print them. Pretty sturdy handle as well. What's your opinion about elephant? Oh, more elves. You see, you know what, Lyris? There are some Elizen I can, I can tolerate, but most of them are horrid. Clearly, there are the three, the three main, the three main ones that everyone can tolerate: Amric, Harshfon, and Hilda. Give me. Give me some nice Hilda. Give me leather, mommy. There's giraffe elves. Yes, there are giraffe elves. They are called the Elizin and they're in Final Fantasy XIV. The acclaimed game that now has a free trial up to level 60. <laughs> With the Heaven's Ward expansion. <laughs> I wonder when that meme's gonna fucking die. I wonder never the game itself dies, which is never. Yeah, because I feel like that game's gonna take over where WoW is gonna die. Oh no, it already has. I'm banned for wait, you're banned from MMOs, Mashi? <laughs> what have you done? Wins. You know, sometimes you enter one of those servers and uh, you just play around a bit too much talking to people. Look, roleplay servers are a different beast. Yeah, you would know. Are you calling me out, Felsha? Yeah, I'm high. Are you? you? feel called out? I don't know. Maybe we will never know. Details. If you feel called out, then that means you feel something needs to be called out. <laughs> we do a little bit of trolling. Yep. What do you think of this color scheme that I'm doing for these models, though? I don't see a Scottish flag. No, I, you see, I painted over the white on the Scot on the Scottish flag. There is no Scottish flag anymore. <laughs> well, it was funny that you mentioned it before. I know. I just like without thinking painted a Scottish flag on it. Ah, uh, yes, the Scots guard. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm kind of going with the sort of what's the what would be the what would be the proper term from like medieval era, like Frankish. Uh, Franco-Germanic. Yeah, Franco-Germanic. That's it. I'm going for I'm going for sort of like a Franco-Germanic style. Because my the head of the house, uh, the head of the actual noble house that these guys serve, has a very kind of French influence, like kind of not like modern French, but you know medieval French. I had to refresh the both the video. Ah, oh, yes, thank you. So yeah, sometimes Twitch be be like that, because Twitch doesn't know how to work sometimes. Oh well, yeah, now now that uh, it's been mentioned, where did you get that blue anyway? Because it is a very nice shade of blue. This, here we go. It is Vallejo Game Color Extra Opaque Heavy Blue. Because yeah, that is very fine and it goes on I'm very sure well. Maybe better for armor. Or Clothing, but it seems to work really well on that model. It does. I haven't tried it on armor yet. 
I haven't tried it on armor. I might try it on armor at some point. Because I definitely have some models downstairs that I could use as sacrificial bits. Ah, the Sid. See, I, I like some Citadel paints. Like, I use their metallics. Because just their metallics are... It's about the only thing they can do right. <laughs> and even then, there are some companies that still manage to do it better. Yeah. Uh, like, a lot of my paints right now... Uh, a lot of my paints are Arby Painter, Vallejo, Scale 75. Um, I have a couple of Instar paints as well, but I haven't used those in a while. Mostly because I've ran low on them and uh, shipping them from England is a bit of a bitch right now. I'm trying to slowly convince the owners of Instar to uh, partner up with a store in Ireland for me to buy them from. Has a more consistent silver than even Citadel. Can't Con remember off the top of my head. Consistent silver? Yeah, like, like a really smooth, really fine, shiny silver. Almost chrome in comparison. Well, it could be Vallejo, because this is the one I use for my Age of Sigmar models. It's either Vallejo or Army Painter. Uh, okay, enjoy, enjoy yourself, Mashi. You have a good one, Mashi. Oh my god, later tater. Jesus. <laughs> Don't hurt my kin like that. <laughs> but yes, uh, it could be this one, because this is the one I used on my on my uh, Stormcast models that I showed you before. Maybe. I think I've only ever seen it applied to a um, gun barrel before. Hmm. And it was because someone was showing off how great it was for their cannon barrels on their Lehman Russes. Ah. And they were right. It did look a lot better than the Citadel paints. They showed them side by side. One that was done with uh, Stormcast silver. One that was done with the other silver. Just felt more consistent. Oh, it was beautiful in comparison. That was just like turning the details from... It was like turning the graphics on a game from low to high. Ooh. Remember to drill your barrels. I don't have barrels to drill, sadly. Crossbows do not have barrels. See, if you don't drill your barrels, you at least need to paint the, the tips of them orange to mark the fact that they are clearly nerf guns. Yes. <laughs> drill something else. <laughs> What do I drill on a model that has a crossbow, though? <laughs> so we're gonna grab the. I wanna grab the flap round and do the base on this guy while I'm here. Well, you know the story of the person who um, had some thunder wolves that they were. Oh no, no, no! I'm not doing that. I'm not that depraved. All right, lioness. That looks weird. In the mouth. The AS. Two different ideals here. Two ideals? No, just two different ends. God damn it, Felser. <laughs> Between the two of you, you've got a good spit roast. Aw, oh, man! Leviticus, that would make painting the eyes a lot harder. Oh, it would. Screw you, I'm here, you're not. <laughs> if you don't like it, go drill out your ears. <laughs> <laughs> wow. People can push a Q-tip so far into their ears that they burst their eardrums. I mean, I'm not going to comment on that one because I've used Q-tips before. Horny and horny isn't. No, 
it's horny and horned. 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 Not horny. <laughs> horned. Hornot. Horny or hornot to be. To be horny or not to be horny? That is the question. Hornet. Hornet. <laughs> I will admit, hornets are not horny at all. They're just very, very angry. They're just assholes. They're probably fits. Hornets are just assholes. No, that's wasps. That's specifically yellow jackets. Oh, I've seen, I've seen videos of yellow jackets actually, yeah. Like, yeah, yellow jackets are just assholes. Only time I've ever been stung by any sort of flattened animal was a hornet, a yellow, sorry, not a hornet, a yellow jacket, because I put my hand somewhere nearby a nest, apparently, um, that was under a playground I was playing on, and one of them flew out and stung me in the face. Ow! And my immediate reflex was to grab it, throw it to the ground, stomp it a couple times, and run. I'm allergic to wasp bee stings. If you drill enough in the in the ass, you can drill them out. <laughs> Jesus Christ! What the fuck, Linus? It's true, Uncle Vlad did do that. Uncle Vlad. Oh. away with model on that. What? Impa someone impaled on a spike? Yes. I mean, it could be done. You need enough modeling putty to do it though. You'd have to custom sculpt it. Sculpt it. But it'd be worth it to just have a line of bodies on sticks across your battlefield. As a terrain piece, like... Not a bad idea, actually. That would be good for, like, if when Old World comes out, like, that would be a good vampire count ba uh, battle board, wouldn't it? Oh, no, battle, the, the, the vampire counts are just not nearly cool enough to deserve that sort of thing. What, you don't think the Von Karsteins would do something like that? No, they'd rather turn the bodies into zombies. That is true. Or skeletons, either way. Spooky, scary skeletons. Speaking of skeletons, have you heard one of my backup characters for the Pathfinder campaign? Is also a skeleton. No, it's a uh, necrocultist. <laughs> That will summon oh. skeletons to just do the spooky, scary skeleton stance to scare people away. <laughs> I think I was there when that was discussed. Yeah. It's like, um, have you ever seen? I'm basically basing it off of, you know, you know, Bal Buddy. I know him well enough. You know his Necromancer comics. Are basing the skeletons off of the skeletons from the Necromancer comics. <laughs> are the skeletons you can summon in Pathfinder even able to talk? I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna talk it out with Rain about that one. <laughs> also, who would be doing the voices for him? I don't know. I might have to come up with several voices in my own range. <laughs> well, that is an ambitious idea. Best of luck to you. Yep.
So what are you basing these models with? Uh, what, like, what's the base material? The material? Well, I mean, what are you doing for it? Are uh, they based or... Oh yeah, they are. They're gonna be... Basically, the idea is that they're fighting on a muddy field in the middle of, like, a rain... In, in the rain. So are you using a technical paint or just, uh, brown? Uh, I will tell you my secret. This is actually just play sand. <laughs> play sand work for muddy ground so here's what I did I bought a big 10 kilogram bag of play sand right put a bunch of it in a container with some water let it dry out over a day or two and it turns into regular fine like beach sand uh, glue it onto the base spray it with it and then just like go over it with the with the brown paint Oh, so you're saying it's already on there? Yeah, it was on there when I primed them. Huh. Interesting. I think I gotta find cheaper ways to get out, get like get the effects I want because you know, paying six or seven euro for technical paint is uh, a bit of a bit of a no-no. Understandable. Considering a ten kilogram a ten kilogram bag of play sand costs two euro. got to go with what's more affordable not what's more professional exactly sometimes. yep that's just how a hobbyist life is exactly I'm, I'm like my focus is staying on a budget when it comes to the paintwork that's why i've been focusing on non-gw brands for my paint my actual paints lately Just because That's a good thing. Uh, it, Citadel needs some competition to from your mind of uh, you know what it's like to actually have competition. Exactly. Plus also some of the other brands are just better for certain things. Oh absolutely. Like as much as like people praise like citadel for like skin tones like cadian flesh tone and whatnot a brand i swear by for doing my faces and skin is scale 75 because they do like purpose made like sets of paints that you can use to do skin tones and they just turn out a, a hell of a lot better Maybe. Like, if you want, if you want to pop off, like, you know, go on. Nah, I'm here for the long haul. Uh, fair enough. I, uh, <laughs> I appreciate that, and I can respect a man that can push through that. So, are you even considering 40k at all, then? Or is this just much the end of it you're gonna move on to other stuff oh, okay at the moment i'm not convinced i'm just not there with 40k at the moment anymore like even outside of all this boycott stuff like the models just don't inspire me as much anymore been exposed to what else is out there now yeah exactly i've been exposed to other things like conquest and god knows other brands like bolt action only problem i've seen with bolt action is that um, it's outright banned in a lot of stores to play because one side of it is the actual nazis in the conflict yep which is bad for me because my my actual faction that I paint is actually the Germans. Yeah. So they have nice models, and I will say that they are very nice, just historical models to have. 
uh, but finding someone to play a game with with those models is not impossible. That's why I, like, I do understand sort of why where they're coming from banning those games, but at the same time, it's a game. It's just uncalled for. It's very clearly a tabletop war game sort of thing. Yeah, it's, it's a historical war game. It's not like it's going to turn people into the into the thing. Yeah, it's just uncalled for. It's a knee jerk reaction, really. But that is the reason why the bolt action just kind of pulled out in most places. Yeah, I know. It, I know it's still kind of big in Canada, oddly enough. Because they don't particularly care for that sort of. Uh, actually, no, they would. I don't know why it's doing well in Canada of all places. Because like I know someone from another Discord server who's Canadian, and he actually does play a German army, and he's not been banned from anywhere once the only the only concept that he's been told he's not allowed to do just because it would make him look like an asshole is doing a army solely based off the the, the last levy which is basically the old the young and the infirm <laughs> oh hmm. you know like basically yeah, you know the last the last days of the 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 siege of Berlin and all that. Yeah, the final closing months of the war. Yeah, like Warlord make actual last levy models with like kit like Hitler Jugend in it, and there's like a ten year old in in the kit that, that's holding like a Panzerfaust. Some people might have a problem with that. Yeah. It was not very. Uh, it was kind of in bad taste in real life as well. Um, what else was there? But I think at the moment, my main focus might be. Con like, might as well just be conquest because I'm really liking the look of the models. I'm, I've been reading the rules a bit before the box arrived with the actual rule book. And the rules really do speak. You know, they seem a lot more straightforward. More straightforward than 40k. Hmm. Well, they're easier for me to understand in an odd way. I think it's mostly down to the fact that from what I've seen, now that could change when I read the rule book that's in the core box. Uh, that on the whole, there isn't really codex specific things. That you have to learn, like, you know, faction specific nuances. Yeah, I get that. Like the only the only nuances you have to learn are really just like what individual upgrades you do to certain units. Cause like you can give certain upgrades to certain units, like there's the noble lord that's in the core box, right? And you can give it a upgrade called the Arms Master. Which basically allows it to I think it would either it doubles the value of its charge rating or doubles the value of its clash rating, I can't remember. Uh, I don't from, understand what these things are. Well, I think the way I've read it, charge the charge thing is the same as the charge phase in 40k. Right? And clash is basically the fight phase. It's just that they call it differently because it's not it's not really fighting, it's just it's to emulate the idea of like, you know the two sides like having their weapons clash against one another. 
like in an actual like so like doing a conflict yeah yeah like in an actual sword fight okay, i am gonna start doing the wash on this well, actually no i'm gonna get one of the next ones based up we'll grab uh, our our spotter <laughs> who has a nice little spyglass Oh, oh! I have a notification. What is this? Yeah, you could have just asked me in Twitch chat live, but sure, I'd be up for a collab sometime. Like, what do you have in mind? Yeah, Leviticus, you don't really need to go to DMs right now. There, you're in the there fucking. Aren't exactly, a lot of people to get uh, your message lost in chat with. Yeah, you're fine, buddy. gotten metal on his face. He will forever be a chrome dome. My face is my shield. <laughs> my face is my shield! I could have, but I feel like it would have been a bit rude to ask in public chat. Well, that's fair, that's fair. But we're all... Yeah, we're, fr to be ashamed of we're friends here. be a different matter if you asked me while I was in the middle of playing a game maybe <laughs> because I'd be a bit more preoccupied but here I'm just kind of looking between the bottle and looking between my screen right now <laughs> could actually if I could get red on board you could join us for, for a muck stream <laughs> Oh, that. Linus. I'm obvious. You know, that Linus being pretty sus right now. <laughs> sus. Sus. Pamela Solaris, we can need him. Sus is Among Us. <laughs> Speaking of Among Us. Hide and Shriek. Ooh. I've not heard of that one, no. But now, um, how was I going to say? Oh yeah, speaking of Among Us, have you seen that they're looking to sue Epic Games? Really? Yeah, because uh, they're adding basically a Among Us mode to Fortnite. Called Imposters. And the map layout is near on identical to the Among Us, the original Among Us map. Yeah, sounds about right. Sounds like something Epic would do. I did what they did, as in Hoverboard. The house of... They're a small dev company, right? So they know what they did. It's a 1v1 versus game where your goal is to jump scare the other player. Oh, Jesus. You just want to scare the shit out of me, is that it? That's exactly it. Like, <laughs> what else did you expect from them? Fucking spoop. No. The spirit lies. <laughs> the spoop lies. You took a lie detector test. It said you lied. I do not need a lie detector. I can usually just hear it in people's voices. <laughs> or the mannerisms. Very true. <laughs> Bye. 
Gmod collab. Jesus, this is what is this? Two thousand twelve. <laughs> I mean, we did revert by how many years? So true, true. Well, culturally, I mean. Hold on. <laughs> Oof. I'm tempted to grab the um, what's it called? The humble bundles doing a big bundle of all the Jackbox stuff at the moment. Yeah, Gmod has a VR add-on. Uh, that's how they did uh, what was it called Half-Life. Um, Half-Life VR. Yeah. Yeah, because Half-Life VR what was done in Gmod. And then Valve was just like, yeah, that shit's ours now. <laughs> the House of no, Gabe. No, no, no. It wasn't Half-Life VR, no, no. It was um, um, Half-Life if the AI were aware. I don't remember what it was called. That, that one miniseries that someone made Mm. Oh, cry of fear in VR would be fucking painful. Let me just look it up. Half Life VR AI. Oh, you mean um, HL HLF AI? Yeah, Half Life VR, but the AI is self-aware. God, like that one. Yeah. I am a masochist. <laughs> you know what, Leviticus, that makes sense. Yeah. Do you know what, actually, if you want a decent horror game to play on your own stream, and this is a suggestion on my end, get yourself the Dolphin Emulator set up and play Eternal Darkness. You have to play Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem. It is such a good game. Did we do a good job with Hellpoint? Well, no. The horror of Hellpoint was the chat. On the horror is seeing the true reality of what society has done to the common man. <laughs> the horror of mob mentality. <sighs> the true monster is man himself. Yes, Lioness. It is perfectly fine being a monster. Personally, the best part of being a monster is that, well, if everyone already expects you to be a bad person, they don't question why you aren't being a bad person. They'll just assume it's some sort of trick. <laughs> they won't question why you just let loose so often. No, Linus, I cannot explain why you said fact instead of chat. That was absolutely no reason for that. <laughs> I knew you were saying. Congratulations, I, you played yeah. yourself. But yeah, nobody expecting you to be a good person is a pretty nice thing, actually. Because then you could just surprise them. Yeah, and you don't disappoint quite as easily. Because you didn't build yourself up to be a really good person or a hero of some kind. You told them you were a monster. You are going to act like it a lot. 
And out of nowhere, that's boom. Just, that's random. It's a one-off thing. Who cares? And then he, and then out of nowhere, boom, he hits you with like several gift subs. Well, I haven't been able to do that in a while. I know. Probably just some amazing things that I miss working. Yeah. Hopefully you can find some work soon, buddy. Uh, I'm gonna have to sign up with Amazon again, I think. Ouch. Even if it's just for a short period. I do need something. Is it that bad? It's just not gone too well. Like, what would you have to do for them? Just deliveries or something? Uh, no. Sortation center. Oh, slightly. the fulfillment centers. Uh, fulfillment is actually a different facility. Sortation is um, the boxes coming in, getting scanned, and then going out somewhere else. Oh, oh, sorting office then. Yeah, that's we, what we call just, them here. We call them sorting offices. All the packages come to the sortation facilities from the other places like UPS that actually do imports or, you know, just cross-country shipping. And the sortation center takes all those packages, scans them, uh, and then puts them into new packaging and sends them out into new trucks. Uh -huh. And I think it's then that they're sent to logistics. I don't remember. I just know it's not my job from there on. Or it wasn't my job. I think this time around, I should still have some experience with them, so shouldn't be quite as difficult. Yeah. Just a matter of finding a ship that I like, at a location that I like. What about you? You got any other prospects outside of streaming? Uh, I might. I'm looking at the moment at a couple of IT jobs to try and find something to do but things are looking pretty grim over here mostly because there's, there's serious talks that they're gonna tr maybe shut down everything again because of this delta variant even though we can't really afford to shut everything down again like, if we shut everything down again, that's it. We're definitely going into a recession here. And they're aware of it, which is why they're only in talks and not actively doing it. Yep. Wait, no. What is anyone supposed to do about it? It mutated too quickly. Exactly. We just need to learn... As, as weird as it sounds, we just need to learn to live with it, really. Instead of just locking everyone up and hiding for the rest of our lives. Which, to be honest, is what I was saying from the beginning. Uh, once you catch it, yeah, you can catch it again. But it only hits you that hard the first time. Um, after that, you can function like an all person. Yeah. Like, yeah, it might mutate again. But it won't hit quite as hard the second time around. Yeah. Once it's mutated. Yeah, because you've built up, like, antibodies... From the last time. But yeah, the problem is that it's still gonna kill people. Oh yeah. If nothing else, people just need to learn to be, I don't know, they make better decisions as to what they're actually doing with all the time they're out and about. Yeah. Blindness's brain has been powered off since her birthday. Wow. Wait, when was your birthday? Yeah, when was that? Still debating on getting vaccine. Uh, I'd say you should get it, but I'm not going to judge you for not getting it. Leviticus, you absolutely should have gotten your vaccine by now. 
start of July. Huh. I don't know about that. You didn't say anything to us? Though to be fair, yeah, it's not written down anywhere. There's only so much I could possibly know there. Yeah, you know what? I'll remember it for next year then. Oh yeah, definitely. Because uh, I clearly mixed this year by, by a full month at least. <laughs> know what I hate about GOG? Man. What do you hate about GOG? They're crazy prices. There is not, you just kind of have to wing it on that one. <sighs> I really do appreciate you take, <laughs> taking part today, Vilstra. Oh, it's no problem. I'm up, and I know that you occasionally do need the support here. Yeah, I'm just. It, I like. For. I like having another like someone like another voice here to talk to. Like someone to bounce thoughts off of that you can actually hear instead of having to read everything they say. Exactly. Like as much as I love everyone that comes by to the streams, it's like I have much more of a reaction to voices rather than texts because. I don't know what it is, my brain just can't really understand people when it's just text because with text you can't understand, you can't like pick up on tone or anything. Imagine not having the same tone all the time, even in voice. Couldn't be me. Look, when I, think, when I hear your voice, all I see is that sneeze clave image in my mind. <laughs> you know what, that is true. I just see sneed. <laughs> The emotional support, or not, he's the emotional support on Clay Soldier now. <laughs> I'm getting there. I'm slowly getting there. I don't want to abandon 40k outright, but damn, Fallout's pretty fucking fun. Yeah. I said, how, who, who are you? How did you get on this frequency? Yo, know, I should kick your fucking ass. <gasps> nah, Sergeant Arch Dornan is my role model. <laughs> Good old Dornan. Yeah, yeah, don't don't let the present hear you say that now, buddy. But yeah, I might start picking up streaming soon. Um, That'd be cool. Not sure how I'm going to figure that out, but I'm going to try to figure it out. Well, Just to, you know, be able to do collabs and say, yeah, here's my channel. Because that seems to be one of the things stopping me right now. I mean, if you ever need help, you could just ask me or Ren or Kami. Oh yeah, absolutely. I was planning to ask you guys for, uh, you know, Really sure. I know I need to ask Ren for some technical support. Yes, ask the Archibagos for technical support. I know she's also doing most of her stuff through guesswork. However, it is less guesswork than I would be doing on my own. Yeah. But yeah, as of right now, I just need to focus on finding work so I can uh, start buying stuff again. Stuff like EDF5. Yeah. Help me kill the jam jam stealing robots. Yeah, you can finally have a fencer. 
I mean, Kami played Fenta for like the first mission yesterday, and that and that was it. Yeah, it was only the first mission, but uh, Fenta is the one that gets the exosuit. Yeah, and they're basically the tanky ones. They're the tanky ones, and the air raider can't call in the mech. <laughs> All right, Kami. What do you mean, yay? Linus, are you are you are you betraying me, Kami? No, Linus is always in four places at the same time. That's all. <laughs> there are multiple Linuses. Now I'm just I don't know why, but now I'm imagining Linus in the uh, in the role of like um, what you call it? The the life has many doors. The Ed Boy meme. Life has many Linus, yes, bad boy. <laughs> yeah, now just imagine her doing that with her PFP. <laughs> just Linus popping through a, a, a terror in, the, in reality. Life has many of me. <laughs> uh, having two screens helps for sure. Yeah, it does. Let me guess, you open like four separate like tabs and then just have them up in four separate windows. I mean, I do that when there's a collab, because I need to be watching all the chats, but aside from that... Yeah. Yeah, you do. You do a lot of work for, for this group, Phil. I mean, even, of if course. It's, even if it's not uh, seen by people. Or the column starts because uh, I feel a responsibility to do my job there. I was given the responsibility to do it. But for the rest of you, it's just because, well, we're friends. Yeah, and I I honestly greatly appreciate the work that you and Linus and the other mods do. Granted, I, I only have you, I have you, Linus, and Reaver, really. Because at the moment, I don't need tons of mods. Chat's pretty chill. Yeah. Even on, at the worst of times, your chat's been very chill. Not had weird things to deal with. Yeah, nobody's saying anything particularly strange yet. Uh, no, just, uh. Well, not in your chat, at least. Yeah, we'll just wait, wait until he gets Solaris going when, when somebody mentions Rhodesia. <laughs> pretty much. Solaris, what do you think of the foul? <laughs> what do you think of bush hats? <laughs> what do you think of really short shorts? <laughs> with boots. What do you think of saying en ending every sentence with my friend? I think, he, I think he's just, like, died from anger. <laughs> nah, he's fine. I found it funny, though, in chat yesterday, when I, I was singing to myself, like, so, like un unconsciously kind of just singing to myself, and then Kami starts singing, it's a long way to Tipperary, and then I just go, no, it's a long way to Mukumbura. <laughs> Oh, oh yeah, Commissar's stream is up already for like a few minutes early, I think, but uh, uh, yeah, just letting you know. Yep. That is perfectly fine. I will just finish up this model and I will get you guys over to her. You got this one done in record time. What? You only, you got this one done in less than half an hour. Yeah, I'm getting the I'm getting the motions down. That's the thing. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's not even really speed painting for me. It's just, it's like muscle memory, really. Once you like, once you're painting like a couple of the same in the same style, you kind of just get the feel. But yeah, 
a really useful skill to have. When, yeah. You know, you got like 20 models to paint through, and they all look either similar or the same. Yeah. There was that time a while ago when I wanted to just focus on doing like one-off models, but with this conquest stuff, I can definitely see myself painting like ho whole armies, you know, just because of the size, the scale. Because like when you're painting a whole lot of Warhammer, and then you, all the detail is just, eh. this is like uh, paint panel line number two hundred and sixty-three. <laughs> well, Linus, you became me when I um, tried to bring you in as a successor. Because I know I won't be here forever to do my job. Because if I pick up work, I don't know if I'll be able to get the right hours to be at everyone's streams. So, you are his apprentice. Else, I can take my place. You are Velstro's apprentice in moderation. I'll just have his face to do. I'll get his base coat of pale flesh on. Oh yeah, funny thing that I found out when I went to go and check my subscriptions. Um, for whatever reason, I'm sub to the commissar until October twenty-first. Huh. And I do not know why. I just have tier one subscription up until October twenty first. Did you like bulk pay? Maybe. I must have. That's the only thing I can think of. Ah, <sighs> right. Oh yeah, Linus. In about a year's time, I'll probably have figured out something about them. Or we'll find someone else to take our place. <laughs> the wordy successors. Alright. I believe we've actually got some good progress today on these models. So we've got the majority of three of them done. We just need to do some minor details and washing. And then finish off the other one. And then paint the rims of the bases and varnish. Well, I will leave that for the next painting stream probably. Or maybe by that time I'll have this four-man squad done and we can start on another. But I have really enjoyed having you all with me here today. I hope you all enjoyed um, watching me paint. Uh, I hope you enjoyed your time here too, Veilstro. Oh yeah, it's been a blast. Thanks for having me. Ah, no problem at all. Uh, I hope you all have a wonderful day. And... We will go and invade Kami. So prepare the ganger raid. Nice as she's putting. <laughs> that is exactly why you aren't allowed to be mod on the mod chats. Yep. Um, you would just troll the, the streamer too much. He does a moderate amount of trolling. Yeah. So here we go. We are raiding now. <laughs>